Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And we are going to have a conversation with Mr. Greg Dirkerson that we have never, ever had before. And I think you're going to want to pay attention to this. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you. And I see you as well. So uh, something that uh, folks may not know unless they've been following you or, you and I for, for a while now is you and I both really started a YouTube channel really around the same time, kind of 2019 uh, um, time frame. And I just got a notification from YouTube. I had no idea this was coming. Uh, but I just crossed 10 million views. Uh, awesome. And when you, yeah, when you get these notes, they kind of pop out and they send you all these charts, they, you know, all of these things. And um, I just wanted to talk about a creating a YouTube channel, how it's worked for us, but also highlight for folks that having a YouTube channel really opens up other opportunities for you. And as long as you have a passion and interest, you're willing to get in front of a camera. Um, you really can do this. It's not as hard as people make it look. And if you really wanted to, you know, create income, you can. And and really, the side effects of this, you you really can create uh, a a decent income stream as a as a side hustle. So, uh, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. That's the main reason, um, you know, that I've monetized mine is to put it together as like an example for people in terms of a business model. And you know, I've had my YouTube channel for a while, but I didn't start using it for business until probably, like you said, 2019, 2020, somewhere around there. I'm looking at it now. Um, I think it goes back to like right at the end of 2019, I started posting, you know, consistent daily content and, uh, I'm, I'm at 5 million views and, you know, the channel brings in a couple thousand a month at its peak when the markets were hot and things were going crazy. And I had a lot more views on the economy and crypto and things. It, it brought in as much as 6,000 a month, um, you know, by posting content regularly. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great way for people to build a little business in you know, a lot of different ways, a lot of different niches you can do. Um, you can do faceless YouTube channels where you just do whiteboard stuff. You can do, there, there's one channel where this uh, creator does uh, dis, Discord-like conversations. So it's just text, no faces, oh, wow. no words. It's just text, you know? And I mean, he's got millions of followers and millions of views on his stuff. There's people that, one person that does unboxing, no sound, no commentary, just unboxing, you know, new oh, wow. items. And it's like, you know, in terms of the sound, it's the sound of the unboxing and stuff and the new products. And I can't remember if they talk through that one or not, but, you know, there's a lot of channels they just narrate and they don't even use their voice. Some yeah. of them are totally automated, outsourced with Fiverr to do voiceovers and do scripts and to do all these different things. And then you have people like us that are doing financial news and, you know, leadership mindset, just all kinds of different things. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's an, it's a good business for a lot of people that, uh, you know, it takes time, takes consistency, but it can, it can be very well for you. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things that when you, when I think about being a, a, a content creator, um, first off, when I started my channel, um, I did it as just a repository, almost like FAQs, right? Cause again, you, you go out and you, you, you basically, I created this channel because of my book, right? My first book, one rental at a time. And people kept asking questions. So my for early videos, were basically just answering those questions so I could send links, right? I didn't, didn't want to repeat myself over and over. Um, but as you as you build a following, um, I have to tell you, uh, it's fun, right? Um, interacting with the audience and hearing from folks that that do the work, which is a saying I have and I adopted from from folks, is a lot of fun. Um, you know, I send out these cards. I don't know if you've seen them, but right? This card is for somebody who got their first deal. And then these cards are for people that got their next deal. Um, basically just to count, just to, to track the impact that I'm making. Right. So, uh, some people take them and they frame them and, and post it on Instagram. It's just awesome, but you can really build a legacy with this besides income, which is amazing. Right. Um, you really can help people. It's, it's, it's an amazing platform for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. I mean, that's why I do what I do, you know, and that's why I started doing what I started doing was, you know, obviously to share. I'm at that point in my life where it's impact. That's what I'm after. I want to share everything I know, everything I've learned, all of the lessons and what I'm learning and growing and doing now and all the different people I work with around the world and all the businesses I'm involved with and deals, you know, right now, but also an example to show people, hey, you can you can make a business out of this if this is what yeah. you want to do. And, uh, you know, and I know you're doing a lot of that too, but the 
impact is huge. You know, now I've turned my comments off for a while now because there's just, I talk about crypto a lot. And you just, yes. get, I yeah, mean, you, yeah I, I would too. If I talked about crypto, that'd be off. I don't know. Oh, there's nonsense. so much scam bots and just crazy. And it's on Facebook now too. So whenever I share to Facebook, I have to go turn comments off on my Facebook page because this, it looks like me, they've copied my account and it's got these scam messages and it's just, it's terrible on these platforms that they can't get rid of this or provide a verification process like, YouTube, if people don't know, the creator, their name is in, you know, dark black background so that you know that they're the ones in the comments versus mm -hmm. somebody else oh, wow. who copies their name in their picture. And so anyways, I've left them off for that reason because I had somebody that reached out to me saying, hey, I got scammed from somebody said they were you, da, 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 da. So look, my comments are off. I don't want that to happen. And uh, I turn them off on all the other platforms as well. Twitter hadn't yeah. been too bad yet. I've heard a lot of people complain about Twitter. So a lot of people give me the feedback on Twitter Sure, and, yeah. you know, same way, you know, so the comments, I get emails all the time that people are like, man, you know, your content's changed my life. It's just, you know, you've helped me so much. I can't believe how valuable it is. And you do this for nothing. And, you know, and I've even had people thank me for keeping the comments off. So it doesn't scam yeah. people and yeah. things like that. And the other thing too, is the toxicity, right? I just, I just don't associate with toxicity. And what happens. And the other thing I noticed is, if there's toxic comments that can bring other people in and then some people want to defend and then it just creates this thing. I'm, I'm done with that. I don't want any polarization. I don't want any, any toxicity. No, so agreed. that's another thing it keeps out of there, but unfortunately it keeps the good positive comments, you know, but I'd rather keep the negative out. And, mm -hmm. you know, if people want to post co positive stuff, they can follow me on Twitter and post and, you know, things like yeah. that. But yeah, the other thing about having a YouTube channel, like uh, again, there's the, the ad revenue, which could be thousands of dollars a, a month. Uh, but it's also the other things you could do with it, right? If you look at what I've been able to do, right? So I have the books and I'm sure YouTube has helped me sell more Amazon books, both my first and my second. Uh, it can be a lead source for courses, whether they're free or paid. Uh, but But really interesting is I've had deals come to me, real estate deals come to me. Right. If you if you're a wholesaler or an agent in Fresno, California, and you have a deal, you have a problem. I've had people reach out to me and I've made tens and not hundreds of thousands of dollars from deals that have come to me. So um, and then again, if I ever wanted to raise private money again, I'm sure I could do that much easier with, you know, the reach of this channel. So uh, I really do think um, finding your niche, you have to know it. You can't be fake. But I mean, if you have a hobby or a passion, I don't care if it's peanut butter, jelly sandwiches, classic cars, there's a niche for you. Just get in front of the camera and record. Uh, it's it's very powerful, uh, both monetary and more. I don't know whatever it is that 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 just legacy. You know, my legacy would have been okay for my family, but now, you know, I think my legacy will outlive me by by decades, and that's that's an awesome feeling. Yeah, yeah, to be able to give back and contribute and help people because, you know, real estate doesn't change, right? There's nothing new when it comes to real estate. I say it all the time, nothing new under the sun. Um, and, you know, the things that you talk about today are going to be re relevant 10 years, 20 years after we're gone. So totally that's good. that's really cool, too. And then the principles of leadership and business and those types of things. And that stuff just is timeless. No, I, I agree. And yeah, again, you've been doing that, being able to impact the world many years after you're gone. And here's a takeaway for everybody here, right? So like people that worry about getting out and putting themselves out there, like a lot of people say, oh, I'd love to do it. I got great things to share, but I don't want to put myself out there. I don't, I don't want somebody thinking something of me. Let me tell you something. When you're dead, you know, when you die, okay, people are going to show up at your funeral. They're going to cry a little bit. Then, or maybe not, you know, they might celebrate, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Then they're going to go to your, you know, uh, you know, to, to afterwards, you know, and they're going to eat and they're going to talk and they're going to celebrate your life. And, you know, they're going to talk a little bit about your life and things there. And then they're going to go home and they're going to go back to work or they're going to go, you know, do whatever it is they do, go to the movies, go out to eat, whatever. And, you know, pretty soon they won't ever think about you again, ever, you know, or speak of you ever again. So why if nobody cares about you to, enough to talk about you when you're dead, would you worry about them talking about you now? And that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is, you know, obviously when you make an impact and all that, you know, hopefully, but at the end of the day, even people that make huge impact, when once they're gone, nobody's talking about, them, you know, every day. They could be in the spotlight, celebrities, biggest of ever, but once their life is celebrated and they're gone, nobody talks about them anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that, that was the big thing. Right. And, um, my goal, and again, hopefully have, you know, knock on wood decades left to go is I want people talking about me or at least mentioning my name 50 years after I'm dead. That's my, that's my stated goal. And YouTube is well, going to be a big part of that. You might want to massage that goal a little bit okay. and tell right. how you want them to think of you. Ah, speak of yes. you. Yeah. Well, Not yeah. just to do it, but how yeah. do you want them to do it? <laughs> very good point. In a very positive light. I want to be changing lives for generations. There you go. There you go. Thank you for that. Well, again, folks, uh, you can go ahead and follow Mr. Greg Dickerson where? Oh, gregdickerson.com. Yeah, he puts out a lot of great stuff. I follow him uh, on every platform I can. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for being an inspiration. And again, your story is in my second book, Truck and a Toolbox. Made that in that second book, 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. Thank you so much. Awesome.